is launching its new 128-bit system, the Dreamcast, and we put it through the test. Will the new console live up to the hype? We go to the experts to find out. We look at the hardware, the machine's online capability, and the games being released at the system's launch. Plus, we examine the future of the Dreamcast. Will it take the lead in the console wars? Stick around to find out. It's game time. Is the Dreamcast Sega's ticket to a comeback, or is it Sega hype? Perhaps the real question is, should I buy it? Hi, I'm Lauren Fielder, and welcome to GameSpot TV's special Dreamcast edition. Adam is out and about on the Dreamcast trail to find out if Sega's new system is the real deal. The Dreamcast Sega's new game system is only about two and a half inches high and seven and a half inches wide. But this little gray box holds the faith of a company and the future of an industry. For the next few months, it will be difficult to miss the hype surrounding the new game system. Sega reportedly poured $100 million on marketing and advertising. With cash and flash, the company hopes to allay any doubts of success and erase memories of its sordid past. Don't make me hurt you. So, after the experience of the Saturn, what have you applied now to the launch of the Dreamcast? I think the lessons, primary lessons we learned were retail distribution, uh, making sure that the right partners got the right amount of product at the right time, uh, as well as uh, marketing. Skeptics and critics had a field day after the Dreamcast's disappointing launch in Japan last November. The unimpressive game lineup led to speculations and seemed to spell the end for the video game giant. So what do you think of all of the controversy and the criticism and all the media attention that has surrounded the Dreamcast for the past six months? I love the fact that people have an opinion. And uh, rightly or wrongly, it's better than being blasé. And so opinions about Dreamcast will never make it, it'll never launch, PlayStation 2 will blow it out of the water when it comes, uh, Dolphin will be along eventually. Um, it's a vibrant business. And, and, and if nobody cared, then the business wouldn't be growing to the level that it's at right now. The turnaround came around this year's E3 event. Like a veteran prize fighter, Sega got its second wind and dealt a wake-up punch. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Showcasing over 40 Japanese and American titles in its booth, Sega made skeptics do a double take and turn doubters into believers. <laughs> Videogames.com editor Jeff Gertzman was one of them. Back when the system came out in Japan, I mean, the launch lineup in Japan was weak. The games that were coming out, you know, even months after the system was out in Japan were also pretty weak. But, I mean, the U.S. lineup is really stellar. It's like everyone, every single journalist in this business said, you know, if Sega doesn't come out with the biggest console launch in history when it comes out in the U.S., they're dead, they're dead, they're finished, they're over. But uh, they, they did that. The Dreamcast is expected to launch with 16 titles, ranging from sports to fighting. Judging from the smiles, grins, and yahoos from several game editors, the U.S. game lineup will be far better than Japan. Now, even with all these great games, there are some publishers that just aren't comfortable with the new system. You have EA, which has said nothing publicly about developing for the Dreamcast. And then there's Namco, that even on the strength of Soul Calibur, have no future plans for any titles. Then again, there's some other companies that are far more comfortable. I think it's a great system. I think there's a, a very unique opportunity for Sega right now to come back, much like they did with Genesis, um, and uh, make an impact, have a, an impact on the market. And again, it's a question, can they sustain their marketing effort through the fall? Capcom plans to deliver three Dreamcast titles this year, and one slated for early next year. Changing attitudes? Yes. But Sega and the Dreamcast face other issues and hurdles that could steal away some thunder from its U.S. launch. The much-anticipated Final Fantasy VIII for the PlayStation ships the same day as the Dreamcast launch. Sony and Nintendo just dropped their system's prices to $100, and the abrupt departure of its U.S. president are raising some eyebrows. But if you're a gamer who just wants to play the best games money can buy, these issues should be invalid. What do you say to the viewer that doesn't have that much cash at their disposal and they're looking only to be able to get one of the next generation console systems? Do they wait for the Nintendo and the Sony or should they go ahead and get the Dreamcast now? They should uh, steal a bunch of money from their parents and run out and buy a Dreamcast. Man, stay off the light speed! My bad. 
Based on what you've seen of the system, would you buy a Dreamcast? Have you ordered one already? Visit the GameSpot TV website and take our Dreamcast poll. And if you'd like to learn more about the Dreamcast, go to the Dreamcast dossier feature on videogames.com. Coming up on GameSpot TV, Sean Smith from Electronic Gaming Monthly examines the Dreamcast hardware and peripherals. And we run down the top games for the new console. With graphics reaching new heights, who's been concentrating on gameplay? Welcome back. Time to check out just what makes the Dreamcast tick. Can the system withstand the test of time, not to mention the long hours gaming? Adam and EGN's Sean Smith dissect the game system and give us the lowdown. Well, you've seen the games and you've heard all the hype, but now let's check out what's driving the Dreamcast. We brought in Sean Smith and EGM all the way from Chicago. How's it going, Adam? It's going really well. Now, what are you making of the design of the Dreamcast? Well, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's just a gray box, but I like it. Uh, we've got the four controller ports in the front for multiplayer games, a couple buttons on top. There's nothing really cluttering the system. The only thing I'm concerned about is the fan. The system tends to get pretty hot, so I think there may be some heat issues in the future. But overall, I think it'll get the job done. So the CPU of the Dreamcast has mm -hmm. a 200 megahertz microprocessor. What does that translate to? Well, hopefully it'll translate into uh, better quality games. It's a, it's a Hitachi 200 megahertz processor. I mean, it's something that we, we've never seen on, on a console system before. Uh, so, I mean, you're going to find that's two or three times faster than, than the PlayStation of the N64. Now, the Dreamcast is using a GD-ROM drive. It's right. CD-ROM and it's not a DVD-ROM. Why did they choose that and what does that mean? Um, well, it's it's basically a, a disk that holds one gigabyte, which is a thousand megs of data, opposed mm -hmm. to 650 megabytes that's on a standard CD. Um, the other reason is that uh, it's, it's, it's a proprietary format for Sega, so pirates are going to have a harder time copying okay. these, these disks. Now, the operating system is Windows CE. What's that going to do for the Dreamcast? Well, apparently it's a, it's a pretty easy operating system to program for, especially for PC game developers who want to port their games over to the Dreamcast. But in addition, I mean, I guess it's just a robust operating system to begin with. In fact, Microsoft has more employees working on Windows CE than they do on Windows 98. Please check the number and dial again. So, the modem. What's your verdict on it? I think it's the most exciting part of the Dreamcast at this point. I mean, it's, it's a 56K modem. Console gamers have never had anything quite like that. And, and with the port's expandability, I mean, you can put an ISDN modem, a DSL modem, or even a cable modem in there in, in the future. It's really going to open up a lot of doors for uh, online gaming for console gamers. So expandability, what's the potential for the system to grow? Well, since it's based on the Windows CE operating system, it's got all kinds of ports for expansion. I think the Dreamcast is going to go places where console game systems have never gone before. But real, bottom line, when are we going to have to see a new console system? Well, you know, four or five years from now, I think the PlayStation's been around that long. But another thing to consider is that four or five years from now, console gaming is going to be a lot different. And I think, at least in part, it'll be thanks to the Dreamcast. Until now, online gaming has been the domain of PC users. Well, that's about to change with Sega's online Dreamcast network. So what's it all about? Watch this. We believe, we believe in the power of the internet and the power of social gaming via the internet. Oh, yeah! By including a 56K modem in every Dreamcast, Sega has set the stage for a revolution in console gaming. <laughs> Peter Moore, Sega's senior VP of marketing, believes that the Dreamcast will push console gaming further than it has ever been. We do not uh, believe that in-home gaming will stay the same as it has been over the past few years. Internet will be the future of gaming. The internet opens so much promise for global gaming and that's a major part of our strategy going forward. We have an incredible and unique opportunity to take online gaming to the next level. I think the online play is going to turn out to be really, really popular. I think that's, that's one of the things that uh, on the PC side they can offer up that, that they haven't been able to offer up on the console side. The ability to get in there and, and you know, team play with your friends. Yahoo! Well, I think a lot of consolers are really hyped up about the internet feature. Initially, Dreamcast owners will only be able to use the Dreamcast network for chatting, message boards, and previews. But next year, Sega will open up the multiplayer aspect of the Dreamcast network. 
With the impending release of the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo's Dolphin, Jeff Gerstmann of VideoGames.com believes the Dreamcast network is essential to the system's future. Provided that the connection speeds move up, uh, it will be very crucial. Um, if it stays at 56K, it's like that's good enough for certain games, but some first-person shooters, you're not going to really see optimum performance. Uh, you know, racing games, you might see you know, a little lag here and there. Um, but if they can get the speeds up, if this whole network that they're supposedly building for, for online support works out, I think it's really going to bring a lot to the gameplay. The quality of the games look really good. If Sega can make sure the packets are, are fast so the games appear fast on your console side, everyone's going to jump on every internet game that comes out as it comes out to the market. So how will Sega's new direction in console gaming influence the gaming industry? Joe Fielder from VideoGames.com believes it will be a directing force in future game development. No, I can definitely see that uh, driving the, the direction of the games. I can see uh, the more developers find they can do with the online component of the Dreamcast, the more they're going to develop into it. You know, you might see games like Quake 3 Arena, where the single player side of the game is a lot less important than the multiplayer, where it's really designed for multiplayer. I think the modem is pretty significant where multiplayer is the end thing now. Um, and it has been on the PC, so it's going to be even bigger on the Dreamcast. Did those last segments whiz by a little too fast? Come by the GameSpot TV website at ZDTV.com and check out our Dreamcast online and hardware specials in streaming video. Coming up in our Dreamcast special, more than 15 games are being released with the new 128-bit console system, but which ones do you want to spend your cash on? We run down the top five to break your piggy bank for. Welcome back. So the Dreamcast itself looks pretty solid, but what about the games? We spoke to the editors at VideoGames.com and got their favorite picks for the Dreamcast launch. Fifth place is House of the Dead 2, the follow-up to the less-than-spectacular arcade port of House of the Dead on Saturn. Once again, it's an on-rails shooter where you waste the various zombies and beasties that the game throws at you. And what it throws looks very, very good. This is a Japanese version of the game, but the only differences you can expect are the addition to unlock the option to show red blood instead of green. But really, what ooze do you think zombies bleed? The game will offer several modes, such as Arcade and Original, which is the arcade game, but with the option to customize some elements, like clip size and damage. The game also comes with a training mode, which is made up of puzzle training levels that are almost as much fun as the game itself. The game is intended to be played with the light gun, though Sega has chosen not to release its peripheral in the U.S. Third-party guns, however, will be available at the launch. There are some who have found the game to suffer from its unnecessary difficulty. Yet there is little question that House of the Dead 2 will become the premier console gun game. NFL 2K could mark the return of Sega Sports. The game includes such an unprecedented amount of detail that you can actually see individual people in the crowd and on the sidelines. The game's physics engine is sophisticated enough to mimic how players would act in the real world. The game has more than 1,500 motion-captured animations and uses AI that learns how to play and then responds. Collision detection is actually on the body rather than in the form of a cylinder around the player. The playbook for the game was designed by the Raiders defensive coach, and the game is definitely one of the first-party titles that Sega has very high hopes for. While there will be more than enough pigskin options for the Dreamcast, NFL 2K is definitely one to check out. Ready to Rumble, despite what you may think, is unquestionably one of the stars of the Dreamcast launch. This over-the-top boxing game comes with two modes, Championship and Arcade. Championship mode is a single-player mode that lets you take a boxer from the bottom of the ranks to the top of the list. Arcade mode is what you'd expect, straight boxing. The game's controls are exceptional and simple. The analog stick moves you about the ring. The triggers block high and low, but when used with the analog stick, let you weave and bob. And the buttons on the face of the controller execute high and low punches. These controls let you jump right into the game and start landing slightly realistic combos. 
The visuals also look great. There are more than 120 facial expressions, so you'll know when you're on top and when you're really hurt. Blood and sweat fly off the bodies, and the crowd actually looks like people rather than a bad impressionist painting. Even if you've played boxing games in the past, there hasn't been anything like Ready to Rumble in a long, long time, and it sets a welcome and brand new standard for the sweet science. It makes complete sense that along with the new Sega system will be a new incarnation of the great Sega mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog. And as most know by this point, the little blue speedster is returning in Sonic Adventure. The game takes the linearity and structure of a 2D game and brings real speed to a 3D platformer. You play five characters, including Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails, who, when played through, will clarify the entire story of the struggle against Dr. Robotnik in the water monster chaos. The game will consist of standard Sonic gameplay tied together with some adventuring areas that offer exploration, help advance the story, and provide bosses to fight. The levels vary from character to character, with Sonic levels being similar to the 2D Sonic and other levels offering comparisons to Jumping Flash. The Japanese version of the game suffered from camera problems, but Sega of America brought in a developer to tweak the viewpoint issues. There's no denying, though, that a platform game never looked like this. It won't take much to convince you that Sonic Adventure is a 3D experience above the rest. We'll have our number one pick after the break, and you probably already have an idea. But if those Dreamcast games whet your appetite, check out some more eye-melting Dreamcast footage at the GameSpot TV website. Simply go to our main page and then click through to our Dreamcast preview page. Next in our Dreamcast special. If you could only buy one game for the console, what's it going to be? We have our top pick. And we've examined the system inside and out, but what will be its future? And what games can we look forward to? Find out when GameSpot TV returns. Welcome back. All right, it's time to fill you in on what looks to be the top game launching with the Dreamcast, and it should come as little surprise. you take one look at Soul Calibur from Namco, you'll quickly realize why there's no doubt that it's the most impressive game launching with the Dreamcast. This follow-up to Soul Blade is a game that even exceeds its arcade counterpart in every way imaginable. The game's graphics enhance the arcade versions with improved polygon counts and high-resolution textures. Each character moves around the stage looking tougher, larger, and more solid than before. Details like hair, clothing, and accessories all move together in rhythm with an extremely realistic physics model. Not satisfied with just improving the quality of the characters, the programmers also added new animations to their movements. There's muscle flexing in the game now, so you'll see like certain parts of the body when they're doing moves. When he's coming out with a sword, you'll see you know muscles kind of ripple and flex and things like that. It's really pretty amazing to watch. The stages themselves complement the characters with 3D backgrounds in ultra-high resolution, and the game also comes with additional moves not found in the arcade. The good looks are matched with controls that benefit from their similarity to the PlayStation controller. The need for precise input makes the D-pad preferable, but the game can be played using the analog stick. Response times are right on the money with the only problems found in the character Maxi, but they can be overcome once you anticipate his quirks. Characters in the game include members from the original roster, with newcomers that are primarily enhanced clones of the characters they replaced from Soul Blade. The house that Pac-Man built has outdone itself by taking the best fighter in the arcades, improved it, and brought it home for under 50 bucks. This is the game to show the world just how powerful the Dreamcast is. Namco, this will be their first and probably one of the only the few Dreamcast games they'll do if they are going to do any more. Um, and they really went all out on the system. Simply put, Soul Calibur is an essential addition to any gamer's collection. If you can't get enough of Soul Calibur, you're struggling with the rest of us. But don't worry, here's our Dreamcast special intro pick.
think that looks good, you should see the game. And we've seen the top five games of launch. Our next segment will give you a taste of what's to come after launch. With Sega's Dreamcast Network and more than 15 titles on launch, it looks to be an interesting fall. Can Sega keep up the momentum? This one's huge! I'm really looking forward to, uh, you know, beyond launch. I'm looking forward to Resident Evil Code Veronica. I think that's going to be really neat. Once again, Claire Redfield is in trouble. And this time around, gamers can look forward to fully polygonal backgrounds. You can help Claire save the world when Resident Evil Code Veronica ships early next year. Because of Sega's plan to release a total of seven fighting games in 1999 alone, the Dreamcast is a fighting fanatic's dream. Marvel vs. Capcom has already created a buzz with its spectacular 2D graphics and its huge lineup of Marvel superheroes and classic Capcom fighters. So pick up your favorite character and prepare to do battle when Marvel vs. Capcom is released this October. Shenmue looks to be the killer app for the system. Its focus on story development and the incredibly detailed graphics inspired Sega to devise a new genre just for Shenmue called Free. Free stands for Full Reactive Eyes Entertainment. And gamers can experience its Full Reactive Eyes Entertainment when Shenmue ships this December. And sports fans will not be left out in the cold with the lightning fast speed of NBA 2000. Promising to play at 60 frames per second, NBA 2000 will have more than 400 individually modeled players and 28 NBA teams. Gamers should get ready for a slam dunk when Sega Sports NBA 2000 is released October 13th. While Sega plans to release 25 more games by the end of 1999, there are still a few titles gamers would like to see released in the U.S. I really hope that Seaman gets announced for the U.S. market because of just the whole thought of hooking up a microphone to Dreamcast and talking to a crazy fish head thing sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> Beyond that, um, I really hope that uh, Namco decides to do Tech and Tag tournament for the system. There's no doubt the Dreamcast games are spectacular and flashy, but the question is, will the system have legs enough to compete against Sony's PlayStation 2 and Nintendo's Dolphin? KO! Now here's something I'm excited about. Sega has announced that Seaman will be released in the United States, though a date has not yet been set. Well, that wraps up our special Dreamcast edition, but you can always go to the GameSpot TV website for more on Sega's new system. And if you have something to say about the new console, come to our chat on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. Till next time, bye. Ice beam.